Hello, Dr. Badijo here. Today I'd like to show you a little bit about how to put text on a 3D model in Tinkercad. Um, so first you want to make sure that you have access to Tinkercad. And if you do have access to Autodesk software through an educational license, you should be able to get access to this as well. You put in Tinkercad.com and it'll ask you for your username and password for your Autodesk account. And you should be able to basically create your own account within Autodesk Tinkercad. So to get started, uh, once you're here in this little dashboard area, uh, you want to create a new design. And what I'm going to show you is um, specifically a 3D model of this little ear saver device, as you see here, uh, which is used when you're using a face mask to alleviate the pressure it puts on the back of your ear um, from the elastic bands as you wear it all day. And so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to import one of these models, which is already available from the NIH website. Um, and we're going to modify it by putting a little bit of text on it just to make it custom. So you'll hit, you know, create new design. It'll open up this page for you. And you're going to want to change the name up here because it automatically populates a brand new unique name for you. So here I'm going to type in ear saver. Ear saver um, GVALS. So I'm going to actually type the text GVALS, which is my laboratory name there. Um, so before we get started actually pulling in the, the new STL file for 3D printing, um, go ahead and, and practice a little bit with maybe one of these primitives here on the side. It already has a little panel on the right hand side where you could click, let's say, on the box, drop it right on the uh, right on the plane there and you can play around with how to uh, resize it and move it around. So some very basic navigation. Um, with your mouse, if you click the right mouse button and drag, you can see it's kind of turning your angle here. Right? It's kind of a little tumbler, essentially. So that's your right mouse button, clicking and dragging. Um, to zoom, you use the little wheel on your mouse. And then panning is using the wheel on your mouse but clicking it down and dragging. So now I can actually pan the 3D model. So if I want to spin it, use a right mouse button, panning the middle um, mouse wheel, and then of course your zoom in and out. And then your right, or excuse me, your left mouse button is actually a selection tool. So I can select off and click on it and select on. So now after doing that, let's turn it like this at this angle. See this little up arrow? That'll allow me to lift it off the plane however many units that I, I have it set to. So here we go, I have it lifted off the plane, I want to put it back down. I can either place it back down like that or click on the numbered here, type in zero, and boom, it's right back down on the plane. And so that's another thing you want to note here, it's kind of like AutoCAD in that sense where if you were to, um, let's say, resize something, like I want to resize Oh, I don't know, this side here to 30. And over here, the same thing, another 30. Um, that's that's essentially what's happening, is you're typing the exact value that of the distance that you want it to be. And if I want the, the height to be the same, i got to click that, which is this little node right up here, and type in 30. Now I can do it just by typing in to be very precise, or I could actually just kind of willy-nilly drag these things and make it whatever type of size I want it to be. So, so I, just, I would just encourage you to go ahead and grab one of these primitives and screw around with it until you feel more comfortable with navigation in here. You also have this little pop-up here, which allow you to mess around with a few more um, adjustments if you want to play around with these as well. So I'm going to click it, and I'm going to hit the Delete button to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and bring in the... Um, ear saver device. So right up here you see import, export, and send to. We're going to import, and choose a file, and I know that it's in my downloads folder, ear saver, surgical mask trap remix. This is something that I downloaded. I'll have it come in at 100% scale, length, width, and height, it shows you there. Um, and I believe this is in millimeters here. There we go. Okay, so since this is a, an STL file that's pretty much ready to go in terms of printing, 
we don't really want to alter this that much anymore. Uh, but I did want to add a little bit of text, and that's the whole point of this video is to show you how to add a little bit of text that is that kind of raises up and shows a little bit of relief. So over here, if you, you click on this little drop menu, find more shapes, you can see a bunch of other things you can check out. Uh, we're going to focus in on text and numbers. We'll click that. And as you'll see here, you have one that's called text, which you can click, drag over, and release. And now you can play a little bit. If it comes in upside down like this, you can twist it around to get it right side up. <laughs> and that's just using this little, um, let's see, I guess you'd call it a little spinny icon right there. Now, to actually change the text itself, you have to go into where it says text in this little pop-up menu. And I call it GVALS, that's what I was going to enter in. Nice. And that, of course, is way too big. And I want the GVALS to be here and um, an ISU on the other side. So we'll leave that saying GVALS, but we're gonna, probably going to have to make some changes here. So we want to resize it. You might want to hold shift so it kind of resizes in a uniform way. Click on the corner and then slowly pull it in until it's sized to about where you can fit it onto your model. Looks like I probably have to make this just a bit smaller. And sometimes you have to be careful because you, you, you don't want to make it too small. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see. Because sometimes the 3D print won't quite turn out if you do it too small. I accidentally flipped it upside down. There we go. Now, if you ever make a mistake while you're doing this, messing around, like I moved that just a little bit and I wanted to go back, just hit Control Z and it'll go back to where it was. And remember, you have to kind of be careful clicking back and forth between these two. There we go, G valves. Um, turn that just a bit. Okay. Turn this down to 0.1 millimeter so it doesn't quite go as fast. There we go. Looks pretty good. I'm going to nudge it over. So right, what I did there was I made a change to the snap grid so it wouldn't um, make such big movements on me. Now I can actually use the arrow keys on my keyboard and nudge it a little bit to kind of get it where I want. All right, I'm going to turn it up sideways to see how this is looking here. All right, it looks like the um, the actual model of the text goes all the way down to the floor, goes through the actual object, and then pops up almost the same height, maybe a little bit taller than the, the, the object itself right there. So we can make changes here if we want to with the height. See, and we can like make it extrude all the way up and then further down. Um, and my advice would be to go ahead and enter some sort of value. So here I'm going to try to go four, or excuse me, two first. We'll try that. And notice how it doesn't pop through. So I'm going to change that to four. Right, so it looks like it's four millimeters up to that point right there, which is essentially the, the thickness there. And I'm going to try six. Okay. And maybe let's go eight. There we go. Now the text is actually all the way raised up to about the level of the, the ear saver strap. Cool. So once I have this one done and, and the font and everything that I want it to be, uh, which by the way, you can change your fonts here. I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste it and then insert different text. So I'm going to control copy. Control paste. So control copy is control C and then control paste or pasting is control V. And I'm going to put this one right over here. I'm going to quickly change the text and double click there. I S U. Enter. I can go right there. And so they'll be about the same. Um, they will be the exact same size, same fonts and everything as long as I'm copying it over. And I feel like that does look pretty good. Okay, so what we have here are three different objects in the scene. We have this guy here, which is the, the ear saver strap. 
and then we have G valves, and then we have ISU. Now, if we're going to be printing this, we want to make sure it's all one piece. So we want to actually group all of these three objects together and then export it. Right? So let's go ahead and hit Shift, click on G valves. Now we have these two both selected, and we want also the device. So holding Shift again, click the device. So we have all three things selected. And if you look over here, it says group or control G. Now everything's one group. Everything's one object. And what we have here are some raised letters that say Indian SD University, ISU, GVALS, Geospatial and Virtual Archaeology, Archaeology Laboratory and Studio. So it's really cool. You can kind of customize um, some of the things that you're 3D printing just by adding a little bit of text. Um, and here's another way you can do something. Um, you have to be careful also how this prints. But instead of making it so it raises up, you can actually make it so it makes a hole. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z, ungroup what we just did. And let me show you what happens if I click the ISU, click over here on the word hole and that little icon there. And now if I grab this one and hit Shift and grab the actual device, and then group it, it basically makes a blank. It just it just punches a big hole right there where that text was. So if I wanted to do this for the entire thing, I also need to turn this into a hole. And then I need to get this object here and now the other object. Group it. Boom. And it punches a hole. So now I have one one ear saver strap and then it has the text kind of punched through. Now I would have to kind of think this through if this is this actually going to deal with, or um, change the structural integrity of the print itself. In this case, yes, we've actually tested this where we put a little hole through the mask strap um, and I think it's probably better to actually leave it the other way where it's um, raised up kind of like this. So, all right, so and once you're finished there, let me go ahead and group these again because I ungrouped them hitting control Z shift and group okay we are all set to go all I have to do is hit export and for 3d print I usually just do STL click STL and look what it did it just downloaded straight to my through my web browser um, into my downloads folder and I can take this slice it in some sort of slicing software like Cura or Simplify and then print it on my 3D printer. Have a really cool uh, design. That's it. Thanks for watching.